This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this impossible square graphic using Inkscape. So we'll go ahead and open up Inkscape and get started. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is set up our document to make sure we're working with a similar view. We'll go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to set the display units to PX and I'm going to turn off the page border where it says page border just uncheck that to turn off the visibility and we can close out of that we're going to want to go to view we'll want custom selected and then we'll come up here to zoom and we're going to zoom in at one to one and up here where it says snap to custom nodes we want to turn that icon on and then we'll open up the align and distribute uh, menu with this button up here uh, we'll want last selected chosen from that drop down and then we'll open up the edit objects colors gradients and stroke menu with that button there so the first thing we're going to do is create a square so I'll come over here to the squares and rectangles tool and I'll hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly symmetrical square like that and mine's actually starting off with a stroke outline so I'm just going to hold shift and click the X to get rid of that and once we've done that we can take the opacity of that and bring that down about in half and then I'm going to grab the select tool and I'll click on this square so we get the, rec the, uh, the rotation handles going around the corners. And I'm going to hold control and grab one of the rotation handles at the corner and rotate it counterclockwise one, two, three steps like that so that we have uh, the corners going perfectly vertical and horizontal like that. And what I'll do now is I'll click on this again to get back to the scaling handles. And I'm going to take this bottom arrow and just click and drag that up like that so we end up with like this flat, almost like a flattened out diamond shape. And maybe I'll make that a little higher. That's pretty good. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And I'll hold Control and Shift and just click and drag to scale this in. We want to scale that in about that much. You can just eyeball it. Something, something in that range should be pretty good. And once we've done that, I'm just going to click and drag over both of these to select them both. And I'll go to Path, Difference. And now that that's done, we can duplicate that object by hitting Control D on the keyboard. I'll turn that shape red, and I'm just going to click and drag this down here and snap the top corner of the red object into the bottom corner of the black object so it's stacked up right beneath it like this. And once we've done that, we can grab the Bezier pen, which is over here, where you just press B on the keyboard. And I'm going to start right about here and snap to that bottom corner and click and come up here and click, then up here, and then over here, and up here then over here, and then back to the starting point. So that we end up with like this, uh, almost like a, uh, a uh, like an L shape, or like a, a, an upside down L shape. And once we've done that, I'm just gonna turn that green, and I'm gonna get rid of that outline by holding shift and clicking on the X over here. And I'll bring the opacity of that down a little bit. I'll grab this select tool, and I wanna duplicate that green shape by hitting control D. And then I'll hold shift and click on the black shape right there and go to path difference. What I'll do next is I'll go back to the Bezier pen and I'm going to close in this shape right here. So I'm going to start at this corner. Let me zoom in so you can see it better. If you want to zoom in yourself, you could hold control and roll up and down the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. I'm going to snap to here and to here and to here and to there. So we end up with this little corner piece right there. I'm going to go back to the select tool and hold shift and click on the black object and go to path union so that we end up with that closed off like that and what I'll do next is um, I'm gonna grab the Bezier pen and I'm gonna create a, uh, a shape going up down the bottom here so I'm gonna start down here at this corner then up here then up here then over here and then back to the starting point and I'll make that one blue I'll just make that uh, and you know what I'll leave that as it is right now I'll color that in in a minute then what I want to do is I'll go back to the select tool I want to take this black object right here and duplicate that by hitting Control D and then hold Shift and click on the red shape right there and go to Path, uh, path, path Difference. And now we can go back to the Bezier pen and create a shape going inside, going along the path of this red object. So we'll just go ahead and click and drag. Well, not drag, just click to put those points there. Just like that. And now we can go to the Select tool and grab this red object and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And I can take this shape right here, now we can color that in blue. Uh, I'll get rid of the outline by holding shift and clicking the X. Bring the opacity down in half, do the same thing over here, make that blue. Hold shift, click the X to turn off the, uh, the stroke. 
And now we can click and drag over all of this, and we could bring the opacity of it all the way up. And you can color it in as you'd like. If you notice in my thumbnail, I made it three different colors. If you if, if you want, you could use three different shades of the same color. So I'll do something like that here as, as an example. I'll make this red. And I'll make this one more of a mid-shade. And I'll take these two objects right here, and I'll make them darker like that. And that's how you can create something like that with Inkscape. I mean, once, you, once you're done, you can click and drag over all of it, hold Control and Shift to scale it down proportionally. And to make the wireframe version of it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab that and hit Control D to create a duplicate copy and bring this duplicate copy over here. Let me make this a little bigger. And um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give this an outline by holding Shift and clicking on the color black, or click on whatever color you want the outline to be. And now we can click on the X over here to get rid of the fill color. And if you notice what happened, there's just a, a, an entire mess here with all of these lines being different sizes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the Stroke Style tab. And where it says Percentage, we're going to change that to PX. And now we can start out with something like 5. And now everything will be in nice uniform shape. We want to round. We want to give this a rounded join so that those corners don't stick out. And you could try different sizes. You can make this thinner or thicker if you'd like. And once you get it to a size you like, you can duplicate it by hitting Control D, just so you have a, another copy of it on hand if you, in case you'd like to work with it again. And you could finalize this one by going to Path, Stroke to Path, Path, Union. And now you can just fill that in with whatever color you'd like. And that should pretty much do it for this tutorial. That's how you can go, go about creating that impossible square graphic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.